it was absolutely a magnificent discovery, made headline news all over the world, and really sort of captured public imagination at, at just the right time. In November 1922, Howard Carter stood on the brink of history, his heart racing as he uncovered the tomb of a forgotten pharaoh. Death will come on swift wings to any who disturb the pharaoh's tomb. With each careful step, he peeled back layers of time, stepping into a world lost for over 3,000 years. But little did he know, his discovery would unleash a chain of events that would grip the world in both wonder and fear, with a terrifying new discovery under Egyptian desert. But what mysteries lie within this tomb, untouched for hundreds of years? What secrets does burial chamber hold? waiting patiently to be revealed to the modern world. As news of the find spread like wildfire, all eyes turned to the Valley of the Kings in Egypt. Carter's name was soon on everyone's lips, hailed as an archaeologist of unmatched skill. Amidst the excitement, whispers of an ancient curse began to circulate, casting a shadow over Carter's triumph. Months earlier, Carter found himself at High Clear Castle, pleading with his benefactor, the 5th Earl of Carnarvon, for one last chance. Years of failed expeditions had strained their partnership, but Carter's plea for more time struck a chord with Carnarvon. With a shaky promise in hand, Carter set out on his final quest. Just three days into his renewed search, Carter stumbled upon the entrance of Tutankhamun's tomb. With Lord Carnarvon by his side, they marveled at the treasures hidden within, a testament to the splendor of ancient Egypt. But amid the riches lay a chilling reminder of the dangers that lurked within. As the curse took hold, claiming lives with each passing day, Carter and his team found themselves in a battle against forces they could barely comprehend. Yet, despite the looming threat, Carter pressed on, driven by a thirst for knowledge that outweighed any fear. Alongside Lord Carnarvon and their team, they delved deeper into the mysteries of the tomb, unlocking secrets that had lain dormant for centuries. But the story doesn't end there. The Curse of Tutankhamun is just one chapter in the grand tale of history, a reminder of the thin line between legend and reality and the enduring spirit of those who dare to defy the unknown. Back in the day, Tutankhamun wasn't exactly the king of the Nile. Sure, he's a household name now, but back then he was just another pharaoh lost in the sands of time. And it turns out, he had some serious family drama going on. Like, Serious enough to make even the Kardashians blush. See, Tut's parents were a bit too close for comfort. They were siblings, which as any biology teacher will tell you, is a recipe for disaster. So when Tutankhamun popped out, he came out with a whole host of physical and mental issues. Poor guy. Fast forward a few thousand years, and old Tut decides to take revenge from beyond the grave. The first victim? Howard Carter's canary. Yeah. You heard me right, a canary. Poor little guy didn't stand a chance against the curse that came slithering into Carter's life. Picture this, a messenger boy, innocently delivering a message, stumbles upon a scene straight out of a horror movie. Then, in Carter's birdcage, is a massive cobra with the canary hanging from its mouth like some twisted ornament. Creepy, right? And if that wasn't enough, the very same day, Carter's team uncovers two statues guarding a secret chamber in Tut's tomb. These statues? Giant cobras, wearing crowns like they owned the place. Talk about bad omens. But Carter and his crew? They're made of tough stuff. They brush off the whispers of curses, chalking it up to coincidence. That is until Lord Carnarvon gets a mosquito bite. Just a tiny little nip, nothing to worry about, right? Wrong. That innocent bite turns deadly infecting Carnarvon with blood poisoning and sealing his fate within weeks. And get this, he was one of the first to set foot inside Tutankhamun's tomb. So yeah, maybe curses aren't just the stuff of legend after all, but Carter, he's not one to back down from a challenge, curse or no curse. He's got mysteries to unravel even if it means dancing with danger in the shadow of the Boy King's wrath. In another one of those spine-chilling coincidences, during an autopsy six months later, they found this weird mark on the pharaoh's cheek, like something had taken a bite out of him. It sent shivers down everyone's spines. I mean, here was this ancient ruler, dead for thousands of years, suddenly showing signs of something straight out of a horror flick. Lord Carnarvon's death didn't help shake off those creepy vibes either. 
He wasn't old by any stretch, just 56 when he kicked the bucket. And it all started from a tiny mosquito bite. Sounds innocent, right? Well, not when it turns into a deadly infection that snuffs out your life within weeks. The timing, just months after he stepped into Tutankhamun's tomb, had tongues wagging about curses and bad omens. And the deaths didn't stop there. George J. Gold, a member of the archaeological team, contracted some fever bug while exploring the tomb of an ancient Egyptian pharaoh and tragically never recovered. Then there was poor Arthur Mace, an English archaeologist who worked closely with Howard Carter during the excavation of Tutankhamun's tomb. He met an untimely demise, metaphorically described as being poisoned to death, likely due to the hazardous conditions of the excavation site. Following Mace's tragic fate, even Carter's secretary, an individual closely associated with the expedition, met a mysterious end in a fancy Mayfair club, shrouded in enigmatic circumstances. It was as though death itself had marked them all, casting a shadow of foreboding over the entire endeavor. The papers lapped it up, spinning tales of ancient curses etched into the very walls of Tutankhamun's tomb. Sir Arthur Conan Doyle even had his own theory about invisible guards lurking in the shadows. But whatever it was, it seemed like Carter and his crew were in the crosshairs. But what about Carter himself, the man who started it all? Did he meet a grisly end at the hands of the Pharaoh's curse? Nope. Turns out he lived a good long life, dying of natural causes years later. Kind of throws a wrench in the whole curse narrative, doesn't it? But hey, who knows? Maybe some mysteries are better left unsolved. Turns out, there's a pretty simple explanation for the so-called Curse of Tutankhamun. No need for spooky symbols or invisible guards, just good old-fashioned human behavior. Before Lord Carnivon passed away, he was quite the savvy businessman. He poured loads of cash into finding Tutankhamun's tomb, and when he finally struck gold, he wanted a piece of the action, so he struck a deal with the Times for exclusive rights to the story. With only the Times allowed in, other papers had zilch to write about. So, they did what they do best. They made stuff up. Sure, some tombs have curses etched into their walls, but Tut's wasn't one of them. The curse the papers hyped up was just a load of baloney cooked up by some wannabe horror writer. It sold papers like hotcakes though, and once people bought into it, every little thing seemed like proof. But here's the kicker. Most people involved in the excavation didn't kick the bucket. Lord Carnarvon's death was probably the weirdest, but it wasn't that mysterious. See, he had a rough time with his health ever since a car accident in 1903. Egypt was supposed to be his escape from chilly winters, not his doom. So when a mosquito bit him, his weakened immune system couldn't handle it. That's all there was to it. As for that mark on the mummy's face, just a coincidence. And since Carnarvon was already six feet under by the time they found it, there was no way to know for sure. So, was there really a curse? Well, not unless you believe in fairy tales. But wait. So you want to hear about a genuine cursed tomb? Buckle up, because I have got a tale that'll make your hair stand on end. Remember how we talked about the so-called curse of Tutankhamun? Well, let me introduce you to another cursed resting place, one that's as real as it gets. Meet Casimir IV, Grand Duke of Lithuania and King of Poland back in the 15th century. He was laid to rest beneath Warl Castle in Krakow undisturbed for nearly 500 years. That is until a team of scientists decided to crack open his tomb to have a peek at the remains and spruce up the old crypt. Now, old Casimir might not have been as famous as Tut, but he sure knew how to lay down a curse. Of the 12 scientists who entered his tomb, 4 were pushing up daisies within a week and the rest didn't fare much better. Ten of them met their end prematurely, and the survivors weren't exactly living their best lives either. But here's the curveball. Casimir's curse wasn't some mystical voodoo. Nope, it was something scientists could put under a microscope and study. They called it Aspergillus flavus, a nasty fungus that had been brewing in the decaying wood of the king's coffin for centuries. When the tomb was opened, it unleashed a deadly cloud of spores, turning the air toxic. So while curses might sound spooky, sometimes the truth is even stranger. It's not ghosts you need to watch out for, but killer mushrooms lurking in ancient tombs. But there are things more difficult to explain than others. There's a mysterious story about a group called the Anunnaki. They're like us in appearance, but are said to have extraordinary power beyond human understanding. People believe they might know where we came from in the universe. 
Forget about the reptilian overlords or fantastical shapeshifters. Instead, envision a race of celestial pioneers traversing the cosmos from their distant home on Nibiru, the fabled 10th planet of our solar system. Contrary to popular myth, the Anunnaki were not evil overlords, but benevolent guides, whose presence on Earth predates the dawn of humanity itself. They were the architects of our world, sculpting its destiny with the hands of gods. Imagine this. Right in the middle of their celestial dance of stars and planets, Nibiru's orbit intersects with that of Earth, announcing the arrival of these celestial voyagers. Their purpose? To heal their wounded world and usher in a new era for humanity. But their journey was risky. Cosmic battles raged among the stars, shaping the destiny of worlds and civilizations. The Anunnaki, ever vigilant, navigated these tumultuous waters with wisdom and resolve. As they descended upon Earth, they brought with them the wisdom of the ages, a treasure trove of knowledge passed down through eons of cosmic history. From the clay of the Earth, they fashioned humanity in their image, imbuing us with the spark of divinity. But why Earth? What brought these celestial beings to our humble planet? The answers lie right under the surface. Gold, revered for its celestial properties, held the key to healing the wounded atmosphere of Nibiru. And so, the Anunnaki toiled in the bowels of the earth, mining its precious bounty with the skill of artisans. But their labor was not in vain, for with each nugget of gold, they forged a bond with humanity that would endure over the ages. Some believe they left behind clues, hidden in the dusty ruins of ancient cities like Ur and Uruk, or etched into the stones of magnificent structures like the Egyptian pyramids. These relics hint at a connection between humanity and these celestial beings, sparking curiosity and speculation about our shared past. From floods to famines, the Anunnaki's wisdom guided our ancestors through the darkest of times. But just as mysteriously as they came, they vanished from our world, leaving behind whispers of their existence in the depths of history and perhaps even within our very DNA. So the next time you look up at the stars, ponder the enigmatic tale of the Anunnaki. They're more than just characters from ancient myths, they're cosmic pioneers whose legacy is woven into the fabric of our existence, waiting to be discovered by those who dare to seek the truth. But the Anunnaki left more than that, apparently. A shadowy figure looms large, a race of giants known as the Nephilim. These mysterious beings, born from the union of the divine Anunnaki and mortal women, stand as a testament to the intersection of celestial and earthly realms. The tale of the Nephilim begin in the Age of Legends, a time when gods walked among mortals and the boundaries between worlds were fluid and ever-shifting. It is said that the Anunnaki, seeking to bridge the gap between heaven and earth, descended upon the mortal realm in search of companionship. Among the daughters of men, they found kindred spirits, beings whose beauty and grace rivaled that of the gods themselves. Enthralled by their mortal counterparts, the Anunnaki forged unions with them, giving rise to a race of beings unlike any the world had ever seen. These offspring, known as the Nephilim, were giants among men, towering over their mortal brethren with a strength and vitality that seemed almost otherworldly. Endowed with the wisdom of the ages and the power of the divine, they strode across the earth like colossi, leaving a trail of wonder and awe in their wake. But with great power comes great responsibility, and the Nephilim soon found themselves embroiled in a struggle for supremacy. As their numbers grew, so too did their ambitions, and before long, they sought to carve out empires of their own, ruling over the mortal realm with an iron fist. Yet their reign was not without its challenges, for the gods themselves watched with growing unease as their offspring rose to prominence. Fearing the consequences of their unchecked power, they intervened, Casting down the Nephilim from their lofty thrones and consigning them to the depths of the earth. But even in exile, the Nephilim were not so easily vanquished. For centuries, they dwelled in the dark recesses of the world, biding their time and nursing their grievances against the gods who had cast them out. And when the time was right, they emerged once more, seeking vengeance upon those who had wronged them. Their comeback shook the world. Cities crumbled and kingdoms fell as they marched forward, unstoppable. Every day, more and more joined their ranks, lured by the promise of power and greatness. But in the midst of all the chaos, a spark of hope flickered. 
a group of regular humans turned heroes rose up. They weren't afraid to stand against the Nephilim, fighting to take back control from those who wanted to rule everything. With bravery and belief in their cause, they stood firm against the darkness, ready to reclaim their world. The battle that followed was epic in scope, as gods and mortals clashed in a cataclysmic struggle for the fate of the world. For years, the forces of light and darkness clashed upon the field of battle, each side fighting with a ferocity born in desperation and despair. And in the end, it was not the strength of arms that determined the outcome, but the power of the human spirit, a force more resilient and enduring than any weapon forged by man or God. For when all seemed lost, it was the courage and sacrifice of ordinary men and women that turned the tide of battle and brought about the downfall of the Nephilim. But though the Nephilim may have been defeated, their legacy lives on in the annals of history, a reminder of the dangers of unchecked ambition and the enduring power of the human spirit. And as long as tales of their deeds are told, so too shall their memory endure, a testament to the eternal struggle between light and darkness that rages within us all. Despite the tales and legends, some people remain skeptical about the existence of the Nephilim. They consider these stories as myth or fairy tales. However, scientists have been delving into ancient civilizations like Egypt, searching for clues that might shed light on these ancient mysteries. Through meticulous excavations and thorough studies of ancient texts, they're piecing together evidence that could potentially unravel the truth behind these ancient legends. As they uncover more artifacts and decipher ancient writings, the possibility of the Nephilim's existence becomes a captivating enigma waiting to be solved. As we reflect on the enigmatic tales of the Anunnaki and the Nephilim, one cannot help but wonder, what other secrets lie waiting to be unearthed in the depths of history? Are there more extraordinary beings waiting just beyond the veil of myth and legend, ready to reveal their stories to humanity? The Anunnaki, with their celestial origins and profound influence on human history, leave us with the lingering questions about our own cosmic heritage. Were they truly the architects of our existence, guiding us through the eons with their advanced knowledge and wisdom? And what legacy do they leave behind, beyond the confines of time and space? Similarly, the Nephilim, born from the union of gods and mortals, challenge our understanding of the boundaries between the divine and the earthly. What mysteries do they hold within their towering frames, and what role did they play in shaping the destiny of humanity? As we ponder these questions, we are reminded of the boundless wonders that await discovery in the annals of human history. Yet, amidst the intrigue and uncertainty, one thing remains clear. The stories of the Anunnaki and the Nephilim are not mere legends, but windows into our own cosmic journey. They remind us of our connection to something greater something beyond the confines of our earthly existence. And as we continue to explore the depths of our past, may we never lose sight of the profound mysteries that unite us with the stars themselves. In the end, it is the quest for understanding, the hunger for knowledge, that drives us forward. For in the stories of the Anunnaki and the Nephilim, we find echoes of our own humanity, beckoning us to explore the wonders of the cosmos and unlock the secrets of our shared heritage.